but the working class deserves a real movement, which is why I have set up a brand new website called Stop the Oppressive Capitalist Class. This is totally not about money.com. Again, that is Stop the Oppressive Capitalist Class. This is totally not about money.com. You can see the website right here where you can support a real working class movement by joining my tea team. <laughs> Hello fellow working class comrades and welcome to another edition of Ralphie the Revolutionary. I'm your host Ralphie the Revolutionary and today I want to talk about some really important topics like wage slavery and the labor theory of value. I think it's a wonderful time to talk about these issues because lately people have been talking about Steven Crowder, who for those who don't know, Steven Crowder is pretty much a neoliberal bootlicker for capitalism, always making videos, always making videos about how socialism is evil. Never talks about the evils of capitalism. Always mocking real heroes of the working class like Bernie Sanders. Well, Louder with Crowder has at least recognized lately that working for large corporations and media companies is really the same thing as slavery. But, before we get into that topic, I think it might be helpful if we start by watching this video, a clip from this video of Professor Richard Wolff, who is a brilliant economist. Richard Wolff used to teach economics at the University of Massachusetts, real prestigious university. And one topic that Professor Richard Wolff talks a lot about is the labor theory of value, which he talks about right here. In the market, there's lots of ways it can happen, but it has to happen. And Marx was very interested in understanding how the labor gets organized in a society. So the labor theory of value was to say, let's look at commodities, things that are produced that we all need, by focusing on the labor in them because that will tell us something about a society. So let me conclude by focusing in on what Marx thought labor would teach us. And here's the answer. In a society, the labor that gets done to produce everything has an interesting quality. The labor that's done produces more than is given to the people, the laborers, who are doing the work. In other words, laborers always produce a surplus of goods and, so, and services beyond what they get. And the interesting question is, who gets that surplus? Yeah, who gets that surplus? Beyond what they get. And the interesting question is, who gets that surplus? In slavery, the workers are slaves and the master gets it. In feudalism, the workers are saw, serfs, and the Lord gets it. And in capitalism, the workers are employees, and the employer gets it. Are you guys getting this? Are you guys paying attention to Richard Wolff? When you really think about it, under our Wild West hyper-capitalist system, working for your employer is really not much different than being a slave. Especially if they're making profits. Profits. <laughs> if they're making profits, that's money that they're not paying to you. The worker. 
Meaning that your employer is stealing money from you. And that's not good. That's not good. Even Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky was another brilliant intellectual. I think he used to teach at MIT. Maybe still does. But he's even talked about this issue before. Now, we're not going to watch the clip. You should probably watch it on your own time. I'd rather watch Secular Talk. For those who don't know, Secular Talk, I think he's a real hero of the working class. I think Secular Talk, Kyle Kalinske, I think he sums up Chomsky's thoughts brilliantly right here. Not lead us to overlook what's fundamentally wrong with that authoritarian structure. Damn, that was fascinating. So I don't know how many of you heard the question, but the guy asked something to the effect of, well, listen, you know, we're very hard on the system, um, but there's no denying that there are some bosses who are good people, they treat their workers well, um, and, you know, they're... Effectively, what's, what's the problem with that? What's the issue? If un under the system you have some bosses who treat their workers well and they have good benefits and health care and good pay and all that stuff, like... Where's there a problem? And then Chomsky makes the comparison. I mean, listen, right, fair, but you could say the same thing under uh, feudalism or under slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you really need to pay attention to these details about all this talk about how some employers pay their employees well and treat them nice. Pay attention to this, you guys. And he didn't get into the specifics here, but I've seen other lectures where he points out that when, when the debate was going on about abolishing slavery, a lot of the uh, pro-slavery elements made astounding arguments saying stuff like, listen, uh, the slaves are better off under this system because we actually care more about them than somebody would care about them in a post-slavery environment. I mean, I need them. They're vital. So what do I what do I do? I mean, I treat them well. I feed them well. I give them a lot of relaxation time. I make sure they're cared for. Um, and if if we get if we get rid of slavery, well, then what happens? Then they become wage slaves. Wage slaves. Wage slaves. Wage slaves. And so instead, I own them. Are you going to treat a car better that you own, or are you going to treat a car better that you rent? So under in a capitalist environment. These workers are going to be rented, not owned. And so they're going to get a worse deal. Yeah, so is it really better off under capitalism? They're not going to be treated as well. They're not going to be fed as well. Uh, you know, I look out for them because they're my property. These were the arguments that were made by slave owners at the time. And the point was like, listen, in reality, I treat them better than they would uh, be treated under a system where slavery was abolished and then they had to go work anyway and rent their labor on the marketplace. And so Chomsky makes this point. And he says, now... Yeah, is wage slavery really much better than slavery? As Kyle mentioned, wage slavery? Pay attention. Even if that's true. Because maybe in some instances it is true. Maybe there were some plantations where that was the case, and then you abolished it, and then they worked in worse conditions. Does that mean that the institution of slavery was defensible? And he says, of course not. Of course not. Because it's a matter of principle. It's a matter of principle. Yeah. That slavery's wrong. And so he just takes it one step further and says, under the capitalist system, how does it work? Again, in other lectures, and I've explained this to you all before, um, he talks about how, think of a big business and how it works. What's the structure? Yeah, big business. Like maybe the Daily Wire. The structure of that business. Usually, you have an owner of the business, and then you have a boss underneath the owner, who the boss takes their orders from the owner. And then, you know, you're a worker, you take, or maybe there's a manager underneath the boss, and then the manager takes the order from the boss, the boss takes the order from the owner, and then, you know, the manager tells you what to do, and you're a worker. And so there's a very rigid hierarchy. Now, what's the closest thing? If you take us out of the realm of economics and just... Yeah, you always want to take it out of the realm of economics. People are always trying to make the economic arguments. And I always have to remind everyone, would you rather live in a society with abundance and comfort and economic growth 
and a higher standard of living? Or would you rather live in a society that's fair? And just talk about it in the realm of politics. What is that structure? That's an authoritarian structure. That's a tyrannical structure. That's a dictatorship. Yeah, every business that, uh, that hires workers is it's basically a dictatorship. It's really no different than Nazi Germany if you get right down to it. Yeah. Yeah, so this brings me to Steven Crowner's video. And he seems to be recognizing a lot of these tropes. One step further, if this show had to be advertiser friendly on YouTube, those guidelines pretty much read, don't say anything offensive ever. Well, what's offensive? Whatever is stuck in Susan Wojcicki's craw that day. And again, Crowner, Crowner is recognizing a real problem here. He doesn't associate it with capitalism, though, but under Wild West hyper-capitalism, which is what we have right now, basically, giant corporations get to control all the speech. And so if you're not going along with it, if you're not going along with the program, if you're not a big enough neoliberal bootlicker, then corporations like big tech companies and big media conglomerates and their corporate sponsors, they will silence you. They will essentially starve you to death by withdrawing their sponsorships in hopes of cutting off your income. And that's not good. That's not good. This is why everyone is afraid to question the elites. I wish those at the top in big conservative with, granted, yeah, a lot of the money, wanted to do better. But they don't. That's why I've created StopBigCon.com, and you can be a signatory, and our plans therein. Another real clever move by Steven Crowder. If you ever want to demonize someone, if you ever really want to demonize someone, just lump them in with some industry, some vague sense of a collective. Put big right before it, like big pharma, big tech, big oil big agriculture, big banks. Right here, he's saying stop big con. Re real clever move by Stephen Crowder. Look, like I've said, I, I have the luxury of not signing. Say what you will about Stephen Crowder, buddy. He he's pretty clever here. I don't need it. I've been demonetized for years. Uh, we've adapted here precisely because of Mug Club. You know, the free content only exists because of those who subscribe. I've promised you we won't do more than one sponsorship spot per show. I will keep my word on that until this show ends. Why? Because it's designed for you. It's not designed for the sponsors. If it's four, five, six, seven sponsors, they're no longer the product. You're the product. And that's not good. So we've adapted here. I don't need this. We've been demonetized and we're not beholden to sponsors who might get boycotted because the sponsors that we have are going to go wherever we go anyway. We know that beyond any shadow of a doubt. That's the luxury of doing business honestly and loyalty. But to the kids out there coming up who don't have that luxury, please don't sign these. You can do better. We can all do better. And the only reason at this point for me to stay and continue doing what I've been doing is to make sure that we all do, that we all do better. So to everyone out there who refuses to sign or is under the cloud of these maybe not entirely enforceable contracts, look, here, here's your signal, water's warm here. I'll produce your show, we'll produce your show. If there are enough of you out there, I will transition Mug Club into a full-scale network with independent content creators who don't want to be locked into slave contracts. Look, Yeah, they're slave contracts. Look, I understand that business relationships sometimes fall through. People don't see eye to eye. I get that. But there is a way to structure these contracts and a network. There's a world in which contracts and a network exists 
where everyone benefits with some semblance of fairness, transparency. There's no need to be enslaved like this. Yeah, there's no need to be enslaved. It's, it's good that it's good that Louder with Crowner is finally recognizing this, that there's really no difference between making money as a political commentator by entering into a contract. There's really no difference between that and say working on a plantation in Mississippi in 1848. If, if you're out there right now and you're making content work, on whatever scale that may be, there are levels to this game, I understand that. And you'd like to have some backup? You'd like to have some brothers, sisters, Zs and arms, some security without losing your shirt? Send your email to creators at louderwithcrowder.com and we'll talk. You want a partnership? Great. Can probably work something out. You want the security of being an employee? Could probably make that work too. There are many ways to skin this cat. And you know what? If Mug Club or whatever network it becomes isn't for you, if this isn't the right home for you, we have lawyers and representation who will negotiate your contract for you with anyone else out there at half the market rate. At half the market rate. See, right here, Crowder kind of undercuts his whole message by bragging about how he essentially underpays these poor, starved lawyers. <laughs> On top of that, he's trying to offer Mug Club, saying, oh, maybe we can build Mug Club into a big media network. Then I'll offer more fair deals. But again, going back to Noam Chomsky and Secular Talk, and even Richard Wolf, if Crowder were to create a new business and hire workers, isn't he, isn't Crowder becoming the slave master in that context? Something worth thinking about. Why? Because I don't like this, and I'm going to end this. We all need to end this together. I have plenty of friends I could use a few enemies. There is strength in numbers. And if you, watching right now, right now, if you want a network that you can truly call your own, I just ask that you enter in your email at stopbigcon.com. Entering in your email makes you a signatory. It's a statement that you want, not just Mug Club, but you want a network that does better. So it's either time for Mug Club to go big or it's time for me to go home. Yeah, so I know Stephen Crowder, he maybe contradicts himself a little bit with his message, but at least Crowder is finally recognizing the fact that entering into a labor agreement is really no different than slavery, and that's not good. That's not good. And if you're not sold yet, we're going to look at a few parts of Jeremy Boring from the Daily Wire. He responded to some of Crowder's points. Not going to watch this whole video, only a few clips that I think are really telling. Really reinforce the fact, the assertion by brilliant thinkers like Noam Chomsky and Richard Wolff, that working for an employer under Wild West hypercapitalism is really no different than slavery or living under a dictatorship. Ever had with any talent, that's the process. Uh, and so here we go. Here was our offer. A four-year initial term with two-year renewal at DW's sole discretion. That just means Stephen's going to work for DW for four years. Uh, and if it's going really well, DW can retain him for an additional two years. Two, uh, the fee. Remember, this is the, the minimum number uh, that we thought would get the conversation started with Stephen. $50 million for the initial term, plus $25 million for... See, now a lot of people are responding to this $50 million guarantee that they offered Stephen Crowder $50 million. They're saying, is that really slavery? But again, you have to go back to Noam Chomsky and Secular Talk who say, look, even if you treat your workers well and pay them nicely, it's still slavery. And that's not good. 
That's not good. And I think this point right here really, really reinforces the fact that Daily Wire just views their workers as mere slaves. This is unfair that he, that if he had a sick day or got in a car wreck, we'd dock him $100,000. But uh, I think that's just totally ina inaccurate for two reasons. One, uh, presumably if he was sick this Tuesday, he could just shoot an episode next Friday and you'd be yeah, you see that, guys? If, you, if you're a little too sick to come to work, eh, just, just make up for it. Just come to work on your own free time. Does that sound fair? Completely even. He's got an awful lot of extra time in the year to shoot these additional, uh, to shoot any episodes to make up. And second of all, it's actually contemplated a little bit later uh, what happens if there's a disability. In fact, we'll just skip right to it. It's, it's item E. In the event of temporary disability or serious illness that prevents Crowder from performing, the fee will be reduced on a pro rata basis, not subject to the fee reduction. Imagine talking about how you are in favor of penalizing your workers for getting disabled. That's not good. That's not good. ...mentioned above. What does that mean? Well, instead of a sort of punitive fee because he's choosing not to do the right thing, in that situation, you'll just reduce it by dividing the total amount of money contemplated you know, by the number of episodes, just subtract that, which I think is, again, incredibly fair. If, if you're being paid a dollar for every box you deliver, you deliver 10 boxes, you get $10. If you deliver nine boxes, you get $9. That's a different concept than if you, if you just choose not to deliver it, in which case we're going to subtract a little bit extra. And again, you pay somebody $50 million, you should get the work. Month. Yeah, you, you see his attitude on Steam and Crowder and workers in general. A lot of people like to bring up the $50 million as if it's not still slavery. And you see Jeremy Boring saying, look, we're paying you $50 million. And he still treats Steam and Crowder like he's a disposable slave. Like, yeah, we're paying you $50 million. We don't care that you're disabled or sick. You need to get to work. You know, it, again, is this really any different than being a slave master or a dictator? I didn't think so. And then you see right here, they're going to penalize Steven Crowder, one of their workers, if one of these big corporations drops their sponsorships. Getting at what I alluded to earlier. Facebook 10, if Spotify. Bank corporations ultimately control speech under capitalism. 10. Same kind of concept. If the content simply cannot appear and therefore cannot not only be used for marketing, cannot be used to grow the brand, also can't be monetized, well, we can't pay him the same as if it was. If you're making 25% of your money on YouTube uh, and now YouTube is permanently gone, we. You can't make that money anymore. It's not punishment. And this is really what it comes down to. S Stephen's philosophy seems to be, I deserve to be paid millions and millions and millions of dollars, whether my show drives the revenue or not. That's not a business relationship. That, he's not looking for a business relationship. He's looking for a benefactor. The Daily Wire is not a nonprofit. We, we aren't benefactors. We're, we're a business. Yeah, you guys hearing this? The Daily Wire, they're not a non-profit. They're a business. That's for profit. Profit. <laughs> and this is why the Daily Wire wants to hire Steven Crowner, so that they can steal his labor value to make a profit while treating him like a slave. And that's not Bear! Stephen implied that he not only didn't like this $12.5 million a year number that I offered him, but that he thought it should be closer to $30 million a year. That's $120 million over four years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's pretty fair if you ask me. In fact, I don't think that goes far enough. I think we as a society need to start talking about a guaranteed minimum wage for content creators on the internet. And you know, I think $30 million minimum wage for content creators sounds pretty fair to me, you know, when you think about YouTubers and podcasters and bloggers 
and Twitch streamers and Instagram models and influencers and OnlyFans artists, I think that they should all get paid at least $30 million a year. This is why I really hate it when people try to crap on Hassan Piker. Hassan Piker, who I think is a real hero of the working class, but a lot of people try to paint Hassan Piker like he's some hypocrite because Hassan Piker talks a lot about income inequality and wealth inequality and how we need to tax the rich so that we can help the poor. And everyone wants to talk about how Hassan Piker makes millions of dollars on Twitch and he owns a multi-million dollar house. Nobody talks about the fact that he makes millions of dollars on Twitch, which is owned by Amazon, another big tech monopoly. Amazon is probably stealing literally trillions of dollars a year in labor value from Hassan Piker. And that's not fair. Anyway, it looks like Steven Crowder responded to Jeremy Boring's neoliberal propaganda. And I think it's very revealing. They don't get deals that they can be wage slaves for a little bit, come over and make a salary and grow their brand. They can be wage slaves for a little bit. Yeah, so Jeremy Boring, he's admitting to what Secular Talk mentioned earlier, that Daily Wire and a lot of these corporations, they engage in wage slavery. Now again, is working for your employer, is working for a giant corporation, is it really different than being a slave? I didn't think so. God bless the talk boy. Those things are worth like $5,000 now. It's an expensive gag. Um, so didn't want to have to do this, but Daily Wire out of themselves very, very quickly. And sure enough, if you see all of the people who, who work there, um, some of whom I have relationships with, uh, they immediately tried to make this all about money. Here's the problem. There are a few problems. And I'll go through with some receipts. Um, everything that was said about negotiations how they transpired beyond the numerical value, which is true and I'll get to, uh, everything else is untrue. I, I don't really want to get into that. It's completely irrelevant. Here's why. Go back to the 20-something minute video, 30-minute video. You've never heard me say or write anywhere online that these offers weren't paying enough money. Why? Because it's not about the money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really not about the money. It's the fact that if he entered into this agreement, he'd be treated like a slave. And you really got to appreciate how louder with Crowder, how he's dying on a cross by leaving millions of dollars on the table for the sake of a collective movement. And I, if I'm being honest, I really find all of the work that Crowder's doing, I find it really inspiring. I just wish that he would actually take this moment to recognize the fact that this is all a result of capitalism. I wish that he would actually become a hero of the working class rather than continue to be a neoliberal bootlicker. And it's actually worse than that if you remember that crowner. Says he wants to build Mon Club into a giant media network so that he can offer what he thinks are more fair contracts when in reality, Crowder will just be another slave master deciding how much his slaves get to eat. Even Sam Cedar, who I think is a real hero of the working class, Sam Cedar, 
he noted that this whole ordeal really shatters, really shatters Louder with Crowner's whole world view on economics. This is, there's a lot of money on there. And the other, the other thing that is important about this was in that video yesterday about Crowder, where, or Wednesday, when he's talking about the, the notion that a contract can be exploitive. Mm -hmm. If a contract can be exploitive, by definition, then Crowder is, his entire worldview about economics is been a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Let alone the nature of the contact, the contract that he claims is exploitative, which right. is a multi-million dollar co contract. But we didn't know that at the time. Yes. He didn't tell us at the time. And it was irrelevant to the point that if a contract can be exploitive, if you can enter into an agreement that is exploitive, his whole worldview about economics and the way the marketplace works has been a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Entering into a contract voluntarily, you know, as we've seen from the rhetoric from the likes of Crowder, when big institutions like large corporations, when they try to persuade you with money, it's really no different than them applying force. Even if you get paid millions of dollars, it's really no different than slavery. But the working class deserves a real movement, which is why I have set up a brand new website called Stop the Oppressive Capitalist Class. This is totally not about money.com. Again, that is Stop the Oppressive Capitalist Class. This is totally not about money.com. You can see the website right here where you can support a real working class movement by joining my tea team. <laughs> and that's actually another problem I have with it, with, with Steven Crowder. He, he, he has this thing called the Mug Club where he offers his paid subscribers the gift of a coffee mug. In exchange for a subscription, when, when in reality, a coffee mug, I mean, it's in the name. A coffee mug really just perpetuates coffee culture. And recently, just the other day, it was reported by the New York Post that 97% of scientists agree that drinking coffee is contributing to climate change. And that's not good. That's not good. So that's why, and this is why I have instead chose a tea, a tea cup instead of a coffee mug. Because that way we're being environmentally friendly. We're saving the planet. So again, go to Stop the Oppressive Capitalist Class. This is totallynotaboutmoney.com right now. And give me money so that we can build a working class movement together.